Thank you very much, Robin. Um, yes, this was the question that um, I was asked to present about, and um, I was a bit apprehensive, I have to say. You have heard already several um, opinions about this. Um, but first, um, I want to acknowledge that um, a large white paper has been produced and um, published earlier this year. So a lot of what I'm um, going to say is based on what is in the white paper. Um, and that was a huge effort of more than 200 people um, uh, providing input about what regenerative agriculture actually might mean for New Zealand and what people want from it. Um, one thing that the white paper did not do was give a definition of regenerative farming. Uh, they did not come to a conclusion. But the technical advisory group for MPI did come up with this quite a mouthful, um, which in, in short is actually about uh, sustainable and viable um, farm systems that look after our land, water, people and animals. Um, but to me, this definition lacks two things that come really strong out of the white paper. And the first one is um, that regenerative agriculture is based on ecological principles, that these farmers really want to work with nature and use natural processes. Another one um, aspect that really came out strongly, and from the primary sector groups, this was actually rated as extremely important and the most important aspect, is that regenerative agriculture seems to empower farmers again and makes farmers proud to be a farmer. And I think this social aspect of regenerative farming is really important as well to keep in mind. If we look in the um, white paper what principles are um, defined for pasture management, we come to these five about maximizing photosynthesis, minimizing disturbance of the swords in the soil, harnessing diversity, managing livestock strategically, and using chemicals sparingly. And a lot of these, um, I think we've heard a lot about these already. These are principles that are, um, and I totally agree with what Derek said earlier, really relate to um, good management practice. A couple of things seem to be a bit different than what we're used to. Um, one is the adaptive multi-paddock grazing, so I'll quickly summarize what that looks like. I compare it with Pastoral 21 in Canterbury, the low input system. Um, it does mean that the stocking density at any time is slightly higher than what we're used to with the animals on short breaks. They get um, two to even six breaks a day. The round length for recovery of pasture is longer. Um, a few farmers that were interviewed about this um, mentioned the three and a half leaf stage. Other farmers I'm hearing about four tons dry matter. With a low pasture utilization, so a residual uh, of about 2,000. So what might be the benefits of um, diverse pastures and perhaps those longer pre-grazing covers? Um, in literature and what we've already heard yesterday a, lo a lot about as well, uh, increased species diversity might improve nutrient and water utilization. But as with all these things, it totally depends with what you compare it with. What is your baseline? Um, if nutrient and water is not um, limiting at all, then you wouldn't see these benefits very much at all. Um, healthier and happier or less stressed animals is also measured. A longer regrowth period a full recovery of root biomass, we heard more about that yesterday as well, for improved resilience. Higher pre-grazing cover. It might mean that animals are better able to select, so actually what they're eating is of a better quality than what we're offering. But with the high density that um, these farmers are saying that they're using, um, that it might not be that animals can select that much and the feed quality might be lower because the plants are more mature. Um, and then also uh, soil carbon, um, soil organic matter build up. We've heard about that as well. And this especially is one, what Mark Shepard said uh, very well yesterday, it's very complex, what this actually might mean. Uh, another risk that we've also already heard from farmers is that if with a long residual, the dead matter builds up in the base of the pasture, we know the palatability 
reduces and we have more risks of um, fungal infections as well. So ending up, um, what are the challenges then for us as researchers, but also for the farmers going forward with these kind of questions? How can we benefit from the good things and avoid the bad things? Um, we heard this question a lot also today and yesterday, which species combinations will work in different um, environments? We will know a lot already, uh, but farmers might not have that information available. How can they select? How can they know? How can they experiment safely on their farms? Trying different things without having too much risk, but also being able to draw the right conclusion. So measure things. What if production is not your main um, driver? If you do want to achieve some other things like animal health or wanting to work on soil quality, how do you measure? How do you see? How do you see improvement? It becomes even more complex if we're looking at other um, roles that our pastures have. Pastures are used in crop rotations as well, and um, we will hear a bit more about that later as well, um, to build up soil structure, soil fertility again. Uh, but even adjacent pastures to crop, the pastures can harbor insects that will help for pest control or for pollination. Our pastures are also important for our landscapes. It's really the landscape that we're selling the world as our um, environment where our products are being produced marketability of what it looks like. And going forward and already now also, um, our paddocks, pastures in, in several regions have a role to protect for, from flood and fire, protect our communities. So how do we deal with this? Um, which kind of pastures and what kind of management uh, will support these kind of functions? And can we put a value onto this? So all in all, um, I think, um, there is a lot here that um, needs to be discussed if farmers want to look at um, their farming systems from a different paradigm with different values and that we should um, help and support them in that way. Um, so for that, I want to finish with the four values that we have in Deere and Z because I think all these four are really important here. Thank you.